Hello everyone. On Friday, we heard the sad news of the death of Prince Philip. 73 years at the Queen's side, and before that, not the easiest of childhoods and upbringings. In one sense, he was born into privilege, but in another, to insecurity and turmoil. There will be plenty of tributes paid to him by people who knew him well, and I'll not repeat them here, save to say that what strikes me is that he was admired and held in affection by many because of his commitment to be himself, when under huge pressure to be what others thought he should be. And because of this, he will have been a great source of hope and reassurance to many, young and old, who have felt that same pressure too. And alongside this, he had a tendency to speak plainly and directly. Oh, well, there's no doubt this can be challenging and even on occasions cause offence, but in a world where truth is stretched to its limits and dissembling with a view to deceit is seen as an art form by too many leaders and politicians, his approach was a breath of fresh air. You may not agree with him, but you knew where he stood. And just imagine a world in which that was true for leaders and politicians. But as well as being his own person, throughout his life he knew what he had to be much more than that. He had to represent the nation. He had to represent us in all our diversity and difference. Remaining true to oneself while being open to others and to represent them honestly is a challenge at the heart of modern society. The life of Prince Philip may just give us some clues to how we can go about it. And I suppose, as in life, so in death, his world reaches into ours and touches us poignantly. The horrid year that has passed has seen hundreds of thousands of us bereaved by the loss of a loved one. Our agony increased by our inability to gather to pay our respects, and this has left us having to cope with our loss in isolation. And the sadness of Prince Philip's death brings all this to the forefront of our emotions once again. In a very real sense, people up and down the country today will feel keenly the Queen's sorrow. For in a way, they share it, they feel it, and they know it to be true. So I want to invite you to remember in your prayers all those who have lost loved ones, who know the pain of parting and who bear the cost of love. And also, behind the headlines and the pomp and the ceremony, to remember that at the heart of this story is a family who have lost one who was loved by them and devoted to them. So please pray too for Her Majesty the Queen, for Prince Charles, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, Prince Edward, and all who they love. We are in the season of Easter, a season of hope and new life. So I leave you with the words ascribed to a royal king in the Old Testament, King David. He wrote, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Thank you for listening, and may the peace, hope and joy of Easter be yours.